This looks like a beaver, but it doesn't look like the old beaver. Well, what we've done is we've got rid of all the cross cables inside the wing and uh, modified the, the wing with the extra ribs and covered it with seaconite and uh, just improved the V&E and the handling of the, the RX-550+. Plus. So you're bringing the RX-550 as it used to be uh, back into production? Yes, we have. Uh, we've actually uh, sold two to date, and it was uh, one to the World Wildlife Fund and one to a guy in northern Saskatchewan. And the um, reason we haven't been promoting it uh, fully until recently is we wanted to catch up on the paperwork and the manuals, and, uh, and that's all been taken care of as of about three weeks ago. Now, when I first flew the Beaver, I think it was 1986, uh, it was one of the first uh, three-axis control aircraft manufactured, at least in Canada, and it had a real, I don't know, uh, Anybody could fly. It was yeah. very easy to fly. Yeah. It was uh, the stall speed was you know very uh, reasonable. It had a, a good climb rate compared to some of the other stuff that we were flying. And even on the 503 Rotax, uh, has anything that you've done changed any of that? No, I think it's more so it's improved. Uh, as you can see, we've got a 503 on this one, and uh, we've been hauling people around to to place. Um, I guess uh, in some of our uh, flight. Uh, testing and whatnot, and, and one was uh, Dennis Mayland that used to do a lot of work for uh, uh, the Beaver people and the Chinook people. Uh, when we did the redesign on this, uh, he mentioned that, I guess the best way to say is the RX-550, the old RX-550 that had a 582 on, uh, is compared to this one with the 503. Now, there are, I, I think uh, the, uh, from the numbers I've got, about a thousand RX 550s out in the field. Now, I don't know the breakout before the, between the RX 550, but I know total Beaver products, there's over 2,200. And there's a lot of uh, the one-seaters, of course, and then I think some of you in the 650s that were included in that figure. Now, the, the, the 550, although it was a good airplane, did have a couple of problems. One was in the wing and the other was in the control system. What have you done to, to fix those problems? Well, we haven't had too much. I think um, maybe part of the uh, uh, problem in the control system was the extra pulley, and actually Spectrum, I think, addressed that before we took over and redesigned it. And we've got rid of all the cross cables inside the wing. It's a solid tubing, similar to what we've done with the Chinook. And um, hopefully we've addressed that. Uh, we've had, a, actually yesterday, had a 2,000 uh, hour uh, Beaver pilot uh, that has a lot of time, a lot of, and he is still uh, uh, flight training on the old one, uh, saying that um, the old ones have a tendency for a little bit of nose heaviness, and he says it's gone, totally gone with this, and uh, I think reason is they had a kind of a built-in flap in the back that was sewn into the Dacron, and of course you can see it's gone on this version. Uh, will your modifications of this aircraft fit onto their old airplane? Yeah. Even though we've only sold uh, two RX-550 uh, pluses today, we've sold a, um, uh, probably half a dozen wing conversions uh, already, and uh, that will update. And the, the people, I'm telling the people the time to do them is either when the Dacron sales go or they have some damage to the wing, and then economically feasible to do the switch then. Um, whether there's a problem, there, there, of course there was the reported failures of the, uh, the Nike was inside the, the wing, and uh, there's a lot of beavers with uh, high, really high time hours that haven't had any of the problem. And it's just the maintenance and a walk around like, like you would in any other situation. Now, this is flying on a 503 Rotax engine, but I was watching the Chinook the other day, and you had that little HPS engine on it, that's, and that's it great. really seemed to be doing a job for you. Yeah, uh, we're really happy with the HKS. We've uh, uh, been able to, very fortunate to mount it under the wing instead of uh, a lot of other manufacturers have had to mount it on top of the wing. And uh, I think that, Due to the uh, opposed cylinder, they get a huge uh, uh, frontal area and then the muffler on top of that and negate some of the horsepower gain of the HKS. Now, if we can get a little more into the HKS, what, uh, is the engine like designed or has it been modified uh, from a car conversion? How is it coming? Well, to our knowledge, it's uh, sole purpose, uh, made exactly for our industry. And how many horsepower is it? Uh, it's 60 horsepower. Now, I'm watching it fly, and that 60 horsepower looks almost the same as what you get out of a 582. Yeah, we've uh, 
reports, early reports was between a 503 and a 582. Uh, and I think due to our configuration and uh, tweaking around with the props and whatnot, we're very close to 582. And uh, I believe we, ha when I get back, um, I already started before, we're gonna start designing a special prop for it. It's more like uh, a little mini 912 and that's the kind of, kind of prop that we need. The, um, what kind of uh, fuel consumption and TBOs and stuff like that are they looking at on this? Well, the TBO is 500 hours. Uh, I, I don't think we've been burning more than one and three quarters uh, gallon. I you know, haven't real done a real scientific test. We'll do that when we get back and just do the amount. But it, it's sipping gas. Uh, even compared to our like our 503 that we're running here, uh, it's definitely better, better than that. Um, how about the weights then? Uh, when you get into four-stroke versus true-stroke, generally people think you've got a lot more weight. Well, the, when they said it was 116 pounds, when we got all the all the components box, it was 116 pounds. And uh, in our airplane configuration with a 582, the mounts and everything, it's about 127 with the rads, oil injection tanks. Uh, and uh, we're either bang on with that or possibly a couple pounds heavier. And, we ha didn't have time to actually weigh the motor mounts and whatnot, but I can't see it. if it's a dry at 116 pounds, we have to worry about another 11 or 12 pounds of extra components. And how does the engine come to the customer then? When I order a Rotex, for example, I order a gear drive, I order electric start, I, you know, single carb, dual carb. How's it coming complete? Everything, everything that, uh, of course, you, electric start is a gearbox as part of the engine. Uh, you can take their muffler, you can't take their muffler, you can take their oil cooler or not their oil cooler. The only thing that you have to get on top of what they supply is the oil lines. And uh, everything else becomes a nice tight little package. What about the warranty on it? Warranty, uh, they've got one year warranty I believe on it. Um, and the guys that we're dealing with right now, Flight Star, the distributors of it, have uh, bent over backwards uh, to help us. and here at the show and also during our configuration uh, they've also allowed me to uh, um, uh, speak directly with uh, HKS in Japan and uh, the actual Japan uh, Kato is, was his name he was here uh, this week and we took him up for a ride and uh, he, probably, he, he made the comment that it's one of the uh, best installations he's seen with his engine so we're, we're pleased with that. Yeah. No. If someone wanted to get more information on the Beaver and its updates or the little Chinook, how do we get a hold of you? Uh, you can get a hold of us. Uh, we've got email, ASAP at junction.net. Uh, phone number is 250-549-1102 or give us a fax, 250-549-3769 uh, and get a hold of us that way or just send us mail. You got a website? Yep. Uh, our website is uh, www.ultralight.ca. Thank you very much, Brad. Thank you, Dave.